Brett Reid, uh, let's begin. We've already spoken about Phil Gould mm. and uh, his move to the Doggies as the general manager of football. What else is happening in Doggy Land? Well, we said there's lots going on at the Dogs. There's a couple of big ones going on. Um, Tavita Pango and Paul Vaughan. Now, Tavita Pango is an interesting one. Everyone thought the West Tigers and Canterbury are obviously vying for Tavita. Everyone expected a decision on, on Friday. It didn't come. They've been bracing for a decision today. Last time, last I spoke to Canterbury, the Tigers and Brisbane, they were all still waiting for Tavita Pangai to make a call. So um, as it stands right now, we're still waiting on Tavita. Um, you know, I think there's a general level of frustration from the Tigers and Canterbury but that they haven't heard yet. Look, they're obviously not to the point where uh, they're pulling out, but um, they're, they're still sort of biding their time and waiting to get something out of Tavita. And, I, and I'm told that Tavita's flipping and flopping and can't make up his mind. And Is, uh, Does he have an offer from Brisbane? He does, Well, he's obviously got one year left on yeah. his deal at Brisbane. His management's spoken to Brisbane about what Brisbane would contribute to the deal. Um, I'm not sure whether that's a sticking point. I don't think it is. I think it's just a matter of Tavita actually making his mind up. Uh, and they're hopeful it'll happen today. He's obviously got a game tomorrow. They're playing the West Tigers. So um, I think they're, they're hopeful they get a decision before that game. Tavita's not playing. He's still suspended from yep. memory. Um, but, you know, a general level of, I think, frustration amongst all three cl clubs who are in, in the middle of that, that they still haven't heard from Tavita. And he's obviously wrestling with things. Uh, I don't think Gus has got anything to do with it because I, the Gus thing, no one knew about till last night. Um, the only people who knew were John Curry, the chairman, and, and Wayne Beavis, his agent. So uh, Tavita and his camp weren't aware of that. Um, I'm sure that will now come into their thinking. I think Canterbury has still got their nose in front there. But as I said, they're hoping to hear today at some point. Uh, and I would imagine at some point today we'll get a decision out of Tavita Pangai, hopefully before the end of the show. It's not all his okay. fault, though, Reedy. I mean, it mm. was a bit of a debacle what happened up there at Brisbane. One minute they wanted him, the next minute mm. they didn't. Mm. He probably didn't know where he stood or mightn't yeah. even still know where he stands now up there. So oh, I think he knows where he stands now, Gertz. I think he knows that you know he's free to go if he can find a club and there won't be an extension for him beyond next year. So I, think, I, don't, I don't think there's any... Uh, lack of clarity over where his, his situation is in Brisbane. I think it's just Tavita getting his head around where he wants to be next year and which club he's more comfortable with, um, you know, and, and sort of working. Because as I said, I think he's he's finding, finding it hard to make a decision. Um, and, you know, I think his agent, Matt Desire, would be keen for him to, to resolve it. And I think, as I said, the club's wanting to resolve it. But he just needs to get in his head. He's comfortable about which club he wants to go to. And obviously the dogs have also got the Paul Vaughan issue going on. Look, I'm told they're sort of six to one favourites to land Paul Vaughan. Uh, the issue there is the, the dogs are waiting for some clarity out of the integrity unit uh, about how it will play out once they do sign him because he obviously can't play. You know, they could sign him now. He would serve his suspension out, but they would have to pay him. Now, uh, he can't play for them. So they've got to sort of work out with the integrity unit what can we pay him given he won't be playing for us? What would be a legitimate payment? What's a, a legitimate contract when we lodge it? So that's one that they're trying to work out at the moment with, with the NRL. Can, can his eight-week suspension that he's mm. been given, uh, now his contract obviously been torn up by the Dragons, does that not come into play so that until he signs with another club and then have to serve him out? Or was last night's game, was that one for Paul Vaughan or well, not? Well, I think that's what Canterbury are trying to establish with the NRL. I think they're just trying to get some clarity around how the suspension would play out if they signed him now, how it would play out if they signed him at the start of next year or for next year, whether that would avoid them having to pay him this year and, and that serves as a suspension and then he comes back next year and the band served. That's what the, NRL, uh, the Canterbury are trying to establish at the moment with the NRL. Right. Mm. It would seem brutally unfair. Confusing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any news on Dale Finucane and where he's... Uh, so Dale, uh, my understanding was Dale was going to get all the offers on the table uh, on Friday, get through the game this week, sit down next week with his agent, Andrew Purcell, and make a decision. He's got about, well, he's got North Queensland three-year three -year offer. I think the Gold Coast the three-year offer. The Gold Coast have come in. Gold Coast have come in. They're and, middle um, forward heavy. I know. I'm, I, I find that one a wow. bit amusing as well. But, yeah, apparently Dale was very, very impressed with the Gold Coast and what they were pitching to him because uh, they've signed Isaac Liu and they've yeah. got... Tino as well. So, got Mo. But yeah, I think they, they, they see Dale as a guy who can improve the culture there and give them some leadership. Okay. Um, he's got, um, obviously the Melbourne Storm have made an offer, but I'm told, told it's long shot that he stays there. Um, <laughs> West Tigers are considering, depending on Tavita Pangai, uh, Newcastle are in for Dale Finucane. So he's got a lot of clubs in for him um, and he'll make a decision at some point next week on what he does.
All right, nation's capital, Elliot Whitehead. Yeah, look, I mean, they've had, they haven't had a lot of luck lately with Englishmen, uh, Canberra. Obviously, the Georgie Williams situation, John Bateman. But the good news for Canberra fans is that Elliot Whitehead's very close to doing a two-year extension down there. He's got one year left on his deal in Canberra. He's got no plans to go anywhere. They're a long way down the track with Elliot Whitehead, and I'd expect an announcement in the next week or two that Elliot Whitehead has, Whitehead has extended his stay in Canberra two more years on, on top of the one year he's got left down there. So good for Canberra. Okay. And Chad Townsend managed that one game. Uh, since he's gone to the Warriors, when's uh, injured, obviously. How's yeah, look, he... Chad did the shoulder. It looks as though he will make his return. I think tomorrow they play uh, the Warriors, so he'll probably need an injection in that shoulder, but it looks like he'll he'll play tomorrow for them. And just on Kalen Ponga, as I said, I spoke to his dad. Uh, I said, I think I said earlier, I spoke to his dad this week, Kalen Ponga. Um, there's been a lot of talk. He's got an option in his deal for, at the end of 22, which effectively means he can go on the market on November 1. Uh, his dad said that the only thing in Carlin's mind right now, when I asked him about the deal and the contract, whether he'd go to market November 1, Carlin's only focus is on winning a premiership with Newcastle. So they love Newcastle. Carlin's got no plans to leave Newcastle. Uh, and, and funnily enough, I also asked him about rugby because there's been a lot of talk about Carlin going to rugby. Yep. And he said, you know, at the moment, league's the be-all and end-all for Carlin. So good news for Newcastle, good news for the NRL. Carlin Pong is going nowhere.